I got home at around 11 p.m. The late night at the office turned into an even later night at the bar. About four drinks deep at this point, and I'm tired. Just about ready to fall asleep as I stumble through the doorway. I lay down on the couch, reach for my bag of joints and spark one up as I pull YouTube on my laptop. I'm in the middle of watching some luxury cruise tour, close to passing out when I hear the front door open. I sit up and turn my head slightly, just enough to see my roommate coming in. He hangs his jacket in the closet and doesn't say anything and walks slowly to his room, which is normal enough. I'd been living with him for about three months, long enough for me to pick up on most of his tendencies. The guy doesn't talk unless spoken to, which was far from a problem for me. He also generally kept things clean on his end, never causing much in the way of problems. I really couldn't complain. So I go back to watching YouTube, and about five minutes later, I hear the shower in his room turning on. Once again, Nothing strange. At this point, I'm watching bare-knuckle boxing highlights with my eyes half open, maybe one or two minutes away from passing out. I remember waking up in darkness, my head hurting, my throat dry as hell. I sat up slowly, waiting for the grogginess to settle into something manageable. Once it did, I grabbed my phone and checked the time. Around 3.30 a.m. from what I remember. I was starving, so I got up, began walking towards the fridge. And then I noticed it. A soft but ever-present noise in the background. It took me a few seconds to really recognize what it was. The shower. Suddenly, the events of last night began replaying in my head. Drinking at the bar, Ubering home, laptop, couch... My roommate coming home, the shower turning on. I stood there for a while, trying to make sense of it. Maybe he went to bed and forgot to turn it off? I shook my head. There's no way that happened, I thought. Maybe he slipped and fell? Realizing the implications of this, I rushed towards his room, but found his bathroom door locked. I began pounding on it. Hey man, you all right? No response. I considered kicking down the door, but decided to call 911 before I did that. I took my phone out, preparing the dial, when I noticed that I had an unread text. One from my roommate. Hey man, I couldn't sleep, so I went over to my girlfriend's place. Not sure when I'll be back. Send two hours ago. I look at the bathroom door, then back down at my phone. Everything about this was wrong. First of all, my roommate barely texts me, and certainly never to tell me that he's going out. Second of all, I know for a fact that he's single, and has been for a while. And third of all, who the hell was in the shower then? I tried calling him, no answer. Sent him some texts, but no response. I walked over to his desk and saw that his keys and wallet were still beside his laptop. My head is starting to spin at this point, and I get out of there, go back into the living room, and turn on the lights. I'm pacing around in a circle, trying to follow the plot, while also trying to ignore the shower, a noise that I never could have imagined being so dreadful in any context. Sometime later, I hear something vibrating on the kitchen counter. I move towards it and see that it's a phone, my roommate's phone. Panic begins setting in, and I immediately grab my keys and run out of the apartment. I make my way down the hall and take the stairs down to the lobby, but even that doesn't seem far enough away, and so I make my way over to the McDonald's across the street. I sit there for a while, considering calling the cops, but for some reason feeling too nervous to do so. Even though there's hardly anybody in there, the place begins to feel suffocating, and I decide to leave, walking back out onto the empty streets. Almost immediately, I get this feeling that I'm being watched, 
and I feel my gaze drifting up and towards the apartment. Soon I'm looking at my balcony, and I see somebody standing there. A dark figure stood completely straight, stiff, to the point where it nearly resembles a mannequin, but it isn't one. If I look closely, I can see it just slightly swaying. I froze in place, my mind hardly able to understand or accept what it was seeing. It's not my roommate. It's too tall. In fact, it's too tall to be anybody I know. It's head nearly scraping the bottom of the balcony above. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't make out any of its details. The darkness and distance may have been enough to explain that away. But there was something about it that drove me towards a different conclusion. That this thing simply possessed no details that could have been observed. That the only element of its composition was that of unadulterated darkness. Of course, my gut instinct was to get the hell away from it. But the voice in my head was telling me that if I were to try and run, this thing would end up following me. I went back into the McDonald's instead locking myself in the bathroom as I finally dialed 911. I told the operator that somebody had broken into my place, but that I had gotten out of there without them noticing, but that they were still in there. It was the story that most accurately represented the situation without making me come across as batshit. The operator told me to hang tight and that they'd be sending somebody over. I left the bathroom waiting at the table closest to the exit until I could see the red and blue lights cutting through the darkness. I went outside to meet the cops, looking up at the balcony to find it empty. Though the door to the living room had been left open, they pelted me with a bunch of questions that I found difficult to answer. Is the intruder armed? Do I have an idea who it might be? What are their intentions? I told them I didn't know, that I couldn't figure it out, but they just kept on asking. Soon I was practically yelling at them to go up there and check it out for themselves, and I suppose the terror in my voice was enough for them to begin taking me seriously. They told me to wait by the entrance, and I watched on as they entered the building. I was out there for a long time growing increasingly anxious at the thought of what they were going to tell me when they came down. A few minutes later, the silence was broken by a single, muffled gunshot. My heart dropped into my stomach, and I continued to wait there, unsure of what to do otherwise. Twenty more minutes of silence, and the officers still hadn't come down. Soon I could hear more of them approaching in the distance. Before I knew it, four more cop cars had pulled up around me and the scene had fallen into chaos. Officers shouting over each other and into their radios, more questions being hurled my way, none of which I was able to answer. The next few sequences were mostly a blur, but I remember the building being evacuated, the tenants frightened and confused as they were ushered outside, while the officers became more and more frantic. I remember hearing more scattered gunshots, some screaming, other noises that were difficult to make sense of. There were a few lapses in my memory after that, but I recall being pushed into the back of a police car. After being driven to the station, I was led into one of the interrogation rooms where I found two nondescript men in suits waiting for me. They didn't introduce themselves and immediately went into a series of questions each one more bizarre than the last. What company was your roommate employed by? What was the nature of his job? How many different people have been inside your apartment since your roommate moved in? Have you ever heard voices inside the apartment from the hours of midnight to 3 a.m.? Voices that did not belong to your roommate? Have you ever seen a circle of people standing outside of the apartment from the hours of midnight to 3 a.m.? People that were exceptionally tall? And one of the most unsettling ones, have you ever seen somebody standing at the foot of your bed upon waking up between the hours of midnight to 3am, only for them to disappear moments later? 
If so, do you remember what they looked like? Any distinct features? As they continued probing me, my mind began conjuring up some of the strange things that had happened after my roommate had moved in. Things that I had written off as figments of my imagination, simply because I had no other explanation for them. I did hear voices, always coming from the room next to mine where my roommate slept. I was always so tired when I heard them, but I do remember it either sounding like a young woman or a man with an extremely deep voice. I could never make out any words. It always sounded like gibberish. And then there was that one time I went to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Still half asleep, I didn't bother turning the lights on as I entered. But as my eyes began adjusting to the dark, I could have sworn that somebody was already sitting on the toilet. Somebody extremely tall. Of course, when I turned on the lights, nothing was there. It was easy to chalk it up as a product of late-night drowsiness at the time, and I had never really thought about it since. After doing my best to give them useful information, the suits spent a good few minutes taking notes on their phones. Once they were done, they quickly sat up, told me that they'd be in touch before leaving the room. A cop came in a few minutes later and told me that since I couldn't return to the apartment, they would set me up in a nearby hotel until they were able to get the situation under control and that I should stay put until they gave me a call. What happened? I asked him. What did you guys find up there? He stared at me for a long time, not as if he were deep in thought, but as if he held deep aversion for what he was considering telling me. Eventually, he shook his head. I don't know. He said. I mean, I really don't know. I nodded and tried to smile, though I'm sure it didn't come across very well. It's the next day now, and I'm in the hotel. Of course, I couldn't sleep, couldn't really eat. The officer hasn't called me yet. When I try searching up information about the evacuation on the internet, all I can find are articles claiming that it was due to a fire. A goddamn fire. Update. I fell asleep and I just woke up. It's 1am now and I can hear the shower.